can I just say as well that my colleague, Dr. Ming Ming Tang, is here as well. Hi, Ming Ming. Good to good to have you with, with me. And I think you might be fielding. Hi, Ming Ming. Hi, Sean. How are you? Fine. Thanks very much for joining, Ming Ming. Um, and my understanding is that if people are putting questions into the chat, then um, rather than me trying to um, you know, work through my presentation and answer questions at the same time, Dr. Tang has kindly agreed to answer those questions. So, uh, so Ming Ming will do that if there are questions, okay? Sure. Um, oh, thanks Ming Ming, I can see you've put that into the chat already, you've, you've made that clear. So hopefully everybody else can see the chat as well, and that's great, and I'll start um, going through our presentation, okay? So as I said, my name is Sean Lean, I'm a Professor of Mechanical Engineering, um, and um, the picture you see here is our fantastic new engineering building. I, uh, I When I studied in NUI Galway, uh, we had a, a new building back then, which was down in Nuns Island, and it was a converted um, corn mill. Um, and it was pretty impressive, and it was also by the water. But in 2011, we moved into this brand new building here. As you can see, it's a state-of-the-art building, and it's completely transformed engineering at Galway. And one of the really good things about it is that it is also integrated engineering at NUI Galway. And so, for example, one of the big developments there on the back of that was that we now have a common first year. That's kind of a really efficient thing because um, a lot of people aren't quite sure which, you know, some people know for sure, some people are, are pretty sure, and then some people maybe 50-50. There's a spectrum um, about which particular um, discipline in engineering you would like to study. So I think it gives a lot of flexibility. Um, and I guess what I'm saying is that the, the co-location of all our disciplines, all our engineering disciplines on one, in one building, which only happened in 2011. Before that, some of them, mechanical, electrical, electronic, for example, industrial engineering, they were all down on, um, and biomedical engineering, they were all down on Nuns Island in, in, the, in what was called the bridge mills. Um, um, and, and then, um, then civil engineering was on the um, main campus. Um, okay, so let's let's um, let's let's keep going. Uh, if my if my if my slides will work, they're a little bit slow at the moment. Um, just seems to be struggling to move through. Um, let me see if, if um, no, that's not working for me. Oh gosh, it looks like. Oh, hang on. It's okay. All right, great. So this is the staff um, of mechanical engineering, and the head of mechanical engineering at the moment is Dr. Quinlan, Dr. Nathan Quinlan. So he's the head of discipline, we call it. We, we talk about the discipline of engineering. That doesn't mean discipline in the, in the, um, in the sense of um, the old sense of maybe secondary school or primary school discipline. You know, it's, it's, it's I guess the discipline means the subject area. Um, the program director of both the bachelor's and, and the master's, and now it's an integrated master's and bachelor's, um, program is Dr. Noel Harrison. And then you can see a number of other colleagues down along here, on, um, including um, Dr. Ming Ming Tang um, down here on the, on, the, on the right. Maybe you can see my pointer. Let me, let me activate my pointer just so you can make sure you can see. So this is Dr. Ming Ming Tang here. He's got a really nice smile there. And there's me. I'm not quite so smiley in that photograph. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so let's try and move on then. So um, we've lots, of course, we live in the, you know, the era of social, social media, so there are lots of different way, social media platforms that you can contact, contact us on. My colleagues, uh, Dr. Quinlan and Dr. Harrison, for example, they're really active on these, and they've set these up in, in recent years. Um, I'm not quite so active on those. I'm a, bit, I'm a, bit, a little bit old school, or, or maybe not quite so, quite so socially connected and socially, socially media connected. You might be, some of you may not be familiar with mechanical engineering, or, and even if you are, sometimes it's not always clear exactly what we mean by mechanical engineering. So for me, um, mechanical engineering is obviously, it's, well, I suppose really for me, mechanical engineering is all about things that move. So, you know, it's about really, I would say, what certainly what attracted me into mechanical engineering was the idea of design. And by design, really, I mean, um, essentially a creative process. So, and that creative process is not like painting a picture. It's completely different to that. It's more like um, where you've got a problem that are you identify a need. So for example, you know, this old type, this, 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 this certain type of um, aircraft engine 
um, is inefficient. It uses too much fuel. It's causing too much damage to the environment. So we need to modify the aircraft engine or certain type of car is inefficient. We need a new type of car. So, you know, we, we need to reduce the, the damage or, you know, the thermal power plants are causing too much damage to the environment, too much CO2 being released. Um, um, we need to develop new type of wind energy, for example. So you have the development of wind turbines, for example. So wind turbines are a classic example of mechanical engineering. Um, but equally, you know, mechanical engineering is very broad. And I suppose in a general sense, what we talk about is that we take the principles of physics, um, so mechanics in particular, I suppose, but also, I suppose also we involve things like chemistry, obviously, and other, other, other aspects, but primarily the principles of physics to analyze in order to design and to design in order to make or manufacture. And then, of course, a really important area, which just you know, seems mundane, and for most of my life, I think if you said to me maintenance, I would think, oh, that, that's not very interesting. But then if you say to me, well, there's a wind turbine platform out in the Irish, in, in, the, in the Atlantic or in the Irish Sea, and ESB want to know, you know, it's been there for 20 years, let's say, and ESB, and maybe its design life was 20 years when it was originally built, but they think it can last for longer and it would cost a lot of money to decommission it. So can we, you know, can we use it for longer? So who's going to actually analyze that situation, look at the design and look at the manufacturing and figure out, can we continue to use that wind turbine platform, for example? So as I said, make, so maybe in a, in a phrase, mechanical engineering is about making things that move. And when I say making, I suppose really we, we include for sure, we completely include, it's not just a question of making something, it's very much about design. So it's a scientific and engineering scientific process of design. And design for me is about CAD, so computer-aided drafting, solid modeling, um, sketching, concepts, developing concepts, solutions, um, and so on and so forth. Okay, and you can see different examples of different kinds of designs. And you know, one of my previous lectures, uh, one of my previous colleagues, I should say, at the University of Nottingham, when I used to work there, used to say, you know, design, uh, engineering design is all around you. If you pick up a pen, if you just pick up a very simple pen, something like this, then we can look at how the, how the lid of that pen is fitted. It's quite a clever little interference fit. How is that designed to make sure that the lid doesn't fall off when we click it in place? Whereas if we don't click in place, the lid will fall off, for example. But, but if you look at the geometry of that lid, then you will see that there are special geometrical features manufactured into that to make it click. So it clicks and locks into position. And that's an example of what's called a push fit, which is incredibly important in all aspects of engineering. Even in aero engines or in automotive, that kind of push fit concept is a fundamental concept for assembly of machines. And it's a, it, you can see it in a, in a simple pen. So, um, you know, but just to show you some examples, for example, just to show you some examples, here's an aero engine. So rather than just say, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when I was when I was um, maybe starting engineering in first year, I remember I started to buy books on automotive engines. I wanted to find out what's inside, what's under the bonnet of the car, what makes the wheels of the car turn, how does the engine work? We know we put petrol in the, in the petrol tank, but what happens to that petrol? How do we actually get power from that? What are the mechanisms that that facilitate or that allow that petrol? or diesel, for example, to get converted into motion. Nowadays, of course, it's a battery. So what are the clever things that Elon Musk and his team have devised to give us really efficient and effective um, and rapidly charging and long range batteries? And you know, what, are the, what are the implications of that? And that's, I suppose, all about fundamental understanding, which is required to actually design something. Um, but, it, but obviously, a, a big part of that also is trying to understand what are the materials and how do we make sure those materials don't crack. So you can see down here some example of little cracks. And these, this is actually some, from some work that some PhD students of mine did uh, in research, where basically they're looking at some kind of a, it's, it's a bit like the example I gave here, some kind of a push fit type assembly. And this is titanium, this particular micrograph you see here is titanium showing these cracks. And because it's a push fit, and there's a little bit of play. So if that's in an engine, 
an aero engine, for example, and there's centrifugal forces or there's other kind of vibration, that vibration can cause what's called microslip. And that microslip can cause wear and cracking. And ultimately, that can potentially cause a device to fail. So, so in terms of research, how can we actually design against that? Can we develop design for new problems? And then, of course, manufacture. And manufacturing is incredibly important. I would say that um, maybe, uh, again, in my own career, I would say I, I, I certainly underestimated the importance of manufacturing for many years. Um, and manufacturing is ultimately um, a massively creative process. And it's really important in terms of jobs. In Ireland, for example, um, you know, many companies provide, provide um, manufacturing jobs. And in many cases, they're quite heavily skilled and advanced, even if it's quality control that you're doing to make sure that if we make something, how do we make sure there, there are no defects in that stent that we're making, for example, that goes into someone's heart or into their, into their arteries or veins to try and protect them from illness, for example. So, and, and all of this is linked. This, there's a triangle design is, I would say, at the center of mechanical engineering at Galway. Materials manufacturer, I would say that particularly since we moved into the new building in the last 10 or so years, um, about 10 years now since we moved in there, 2011, then I think we've really improved our ability to do laboratory um, experiments in teaching and research. Um, and that's really important. So again, to show some more examples, you know, I think, you know, whether it's, I mean, one of my colleagues this week, Dr. Harrison, just found out that he's working with physics. He's got a new grant this week, working with physics to do 3D printing of antennae for satellites with the European Space Agency. So you can see an example of a space, space um, satellite on the right-hand side here. And then there's some other examples here of some work that, the type of work that Dr. Tong and myself do, for example, looking at how materials, what happens to materials when you heat them up, because uh, a lot of manufacturing processes, you heat up the material and then you, you um, when it's hot, it's soft, so you can change its shape very easily. And then you change its shape and then you, for example, you roll it or you forge it or you uh, form it into a shape, um, whether it's a saucepan or whether it's a, 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 a turbine blade on an aero engine or whether it's a welded connection in a power plant up in the right-hand corner, you can see examples of cracks and computer models trying to predict where, where, why those cracks occur in plant to make sure that we don't have downtime in plant um, during the winter, for example, so that our, our power plants continue to operate. <clears throat> so, and I guess really we, robotics, for example, is a huge aspect of um, mechanical engineering and manufacturing processes that's really important um, in Ireland, um, it's becoming obviously even more important as we work towards what's called Industry 4.0, which is where we have the connectivity that the internet gives us, um, and that allows us to be able to perhaps remotely control manufacturing processes, for example, in a plant. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm just conscious of time. We were running a little bit late, but so I would say not, so in terms of, you might say, what do we design? Well, mechanical engineers design devices, yes. So mechanical engineers design mobile phones, for example. You take your mobile phone, you look at every part of that, the body of it, the shape of it, the chips. That's, you know, Intel will employ many mechanical engineers. Of course, they'll employ electronic engineers, physicists. Um, this year, they were taking on chemistry graduates as well. So, but, the, but the, you can, you know, what you know for sure is a mechanical engineer will be able to design to make sure that that phone doesn't bend when you sit, put it in your back pocket and sit in your car, for example, or you know, to make sure that you've got the right materials, the right shape, and, and also that all of the bits in the middle, that the, the electronic circuits, for example, that they don't um, melt when they get hot. Because I don't know about you, but my phone gets hot when I'm using it a lot. So you can imagine right in the center, if it gets hot enough that you can feel it in your hands on the outside, what's it like right in at the center of the chips? It gets hot as well. So, Devices, components, and complete systems. So complete, a complete system, a complete plant, for example, is um, that's part of what, what's 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 um, what's going on. So one of the really important aspects and big developments that happened really in the last 40 or 50 years in particular is the fact that we can now do what you could call in silico design. What I mean by in silico design is 
you know, in silico is referring really to digital design, so on a computer, where we can have computer models of everything. So we talk about the digital twin of real manufactured components and manufacturing processes. Um, so here's an example of an automotive axle assembly computer model, where all the details of that to a, re, to a okay, you won't have every single detail, but you can see it even includes the fasteners here. So a lot of details in there. And then, but of course, mechanical engineers, for example, need to understand, you know, if this is vibrating, how are the stresses? So this is showing an example of a little cube showing the stresses on a piece of material in order to design that so it doesn't break. And then you can think about the exact same process for wind turbines down in the bottom right-hand corner. And of course, all of that is, is, is the subject matter of the design projects that you will take when you're studying mechanical engineering at Galway. I need to be a little bit careful on time. So of course, as well as solid mechanics, thermodynamics is a massively unique and characteristic um, subject within mechanical engineering. So, you know, the only engineering discipline that deals with thermo and fluids together is mechanical engineering. And it's incredibly important. Back in, in when I was a student, that's, you can imagine for internal combustion engines, that's really important. For aircraft engines, that's really important. For manufacturing processes, that's incredibly important. For wind turbines, it's incredibly important. How does fluid and heat interact, for example? Lots of other examples then, designing, designing lots of things. Here's an example down here in the right, in the bottom right of um, a, a biomedical application showing um, basically a computer model of, um, I think it's a part of a human body, right? Um, and it's basically showing, um, it's showing how computers can be used. So for example, one of my students, one of my former, one of our former students, one of our top former students is now gone to do a PhD at MIT when he was with us, his final year project was making a computer model of the human heart. And he got that work published. And now he's gone to further develop that work, um, looking at um, designing complex robotic systems for massaging the heart to prevent heart disease. So I think these are called cardiac gloves. You might read about them. It's, he works with someone called Ellen Roach. Um, so more examples at in our labs, we have a 3D metal printer, you can see it here. And the 3D metal printer, you can see an, a little animation of the 3D metal printer. You can see that little spark, spark going around there. That's actually a laser, which is melting material and solidifying it to form a complex component, such as the one you see in the, in the, in the middle here, which looks a little bit like a, a small scale um, engine component, basically. It looks like a cylinder block, actually. Okay, my colleague, Dr. Harrison, looks after the 3D metal printer added manufacturing lab. And okay, lots of, lots of other themes there that I think I want to kind of move on time-wise. Um, energy and power, massive themes, um, you know, whether it's whether, and, and you can look down the bottom in the center here, this is an example of the open hydro tidal turbine concept. Um, and you can see here some examples of um, marine ship crankshafts diesel crankshafts for diesel engines on ships. So there, you can see here the crankshafts, the crank throws are bigger than the people. So very, very enormous. This is a bit like, perhaps a bit like what you'd have seen on the Titanic. If you saw that film, you saw those kind of moving crankshafts um, in those days. But similar technology is still being used on, on all the ships all around the world, basically, in the oceans of the world. So transport, aerospace, automotive, marine, agriculture, rail, all, all of that falls under the under the ambit of, of mechanical engineering as well. And then I won't go too much more. This is, this is basically showing a, a really important sector in Galway and Ireland is the biomedical sector. And biomedical engineering is you know, started in mechanical engineering around about 2008. Um, and essentially it was part of mechanical engineering originally. And then it's more recently it's become a separate degree. Um, and, but, but essentially, you know, the biomedical companies in Galway love to employ mechanical engineering graduates. Um, it's, that's, most, of the, most of the work is, uh, mechanical engineers can do almost all of the work that a biomedical engineer can do in, in, as required by biomedical companies in Ireland and Galway, okay? You can see lots of examples of different applications here. Research projects, uh, various research projects, novel devices within Dr. Harrison, for example, has a patented a um, novel modular design for a new type of hip stem implant. Um, 
Engineers Ireland, our, our programs, of course, are accredited by Engineers Ireland. So that's a really important thing. And one of the key things that, that goes on there, you might say, well, what does that mean? Well, what it really means is that we design all our modules and all our teaching um, and all our projects to satisfy a set of program outcomes that, in fact, are internationally agreed program outcomes. They're monitored and certified in Ireland by Engineers Ireland. But they're the same thing. I'm, for example, I'm an external examiner at the University of Nottingham, and we use they they uh, they use the exact same approach, exact same approach. And in that case, it's IMECE, the Institute of Mechanical Engineers in the UK. But essentially, they're all part. All of these engineers institutions in the different countries, they all work together. They're all singing off the same hymn sheet, basically. <clears throat> so you can see these program outcomes here. Very important: the ability to design a system component. Our process to meet specified needs. So every four or five years, I can't remember which right now, we have to submit our complete program for review by Engineers Ireland. Very big job. And Engineers Ireland will appoint a panel of engineers from throughout the island of Ireland, different universities and industry to come in and make a judgment and assessment about whether they're going to accredit our degrees for another five years. And they do that on the basis of the evidence that we provide about the work that the students have submitted, the assessments and the teaching that we deliver, and so on and so forth, the projects, all of that. And you can see that you know, the ability to work effectively as an individual, in teams, and in multidisciplinary settings, for example, POF, program, program outcome F, for example, there. So you can see these are a whole bunch of these. You can, you can look at them. Perhaps you're looking at them, and you can always um, look them up as well. And if, you want, if you've got further questions afterwards, you can act, ask Dr. Tong or myself, Afterwards, you can, you can send an email, for example, or put it into the chat. Um, <clears throat> so this is, this is kind of a slightly a higher level, the program areas showing the same kind of idea. So science and mathematics is one key aspect, which is important. If you look here at this chart, science and mathematics is important in the early years, but as it goes, uh, and that's, uh, that's the way it should be, because if you like, so as we always try to build from a position of strength, we always try to work from a position of strength. So when you come in from secondary school, you're already doing a lot of mathematics, you're doing a lot of physics, um, you're doing some of the key subjects typically. So we build, build on those foundations. If you don't have them, then we, we continue to teach, obviously, in first year and second year what's required, the fundamental information in mathematics and science and so-called engineering science. Um, and then as the years go on, it, the, um, things like you can see, PAD and PAE here, engineering practice and creativity and innovation become more important as you do individual projects, you work on design projects, um, you work on research projects, and so on and so forth. Um, this is just, uh, this. I won't go through this in too much detail, but this is really just showing you as a very quick snapshot of, a snapshot view of basically second year university examination in mechanical to show you the split, the spread of subjects. So you can see, this is managed by my colleague, Dr. Harrison, um, outstanding, outstandingly managed, fantastic guy, really looks after, looks after our students. You know, you won't get better care than Dr. Harrison gives, guarantee you that. But in particular, he's designed, we, we, this has happened over years, but he's been managing it in recent years. You can see there's a nice spread of the modules between semester one and semester two, obviously, and you're getting a nice mixture of including electrical themes, which are really important. If you've got electrical cars, for example, nowadays, it's really important for mechanical engineers to understand about that. Um, and then you can see the thermodynamics and fluids, statistics, manufacturing, strength of materials, materials itself. So not just strength of the materials, but you know, how do we make materials? Um, what do the materials look like inside? And what are they, and how can we design materials for strength? Yes, but also perhaps for stiffness, um, and maybe also for manufacturing, for lightweight, which is really important. Um, and then you see, this is third year university examination. We start to bring in some numerical methods, so finite element methods here, for example. So if you remember, I showed you the computer model earlier on of an automotive axle assembly. That computer model. That's the kind of thing that you learn how to do in finite element methods in third year, for example. Um, and this is part of the integrated five-year ME and BE program. So we, we have an integrated five-year program now, essentially, which is what we like our students to do. Mechanical analysis and design, you can see that there as well. Um, 
And then here is an example of the fourth year, uh, the fourth year um, syllabus, okay? And you can see, again, computational methods is in here, um, advanced mechanical analysis and design. So that's a module I teach, digital control, um, the professional experience. So that's our placement, which is really important that everybody does basically. We bring in some biomechanics as optional modules. And we bring in some industrial engineering. So regulatory affairs, for example, which is incredibly important. Someone told me recently that in pharmaceuticals, which is perhaps not quite on the theme, but in pharmaceuticals, apparently the most powerful person in pharmaceutical chain, if you like supply chain, apparently is the regulator, the person who actually decides, um, you know, on, on makes a decision about whether particular pharmaceuticals, for example, are approved or not. I imagine something similar is true in biomedical, the biomedical space. So regulatory is a very regulatory affair is very very important. Managing that process to make sure that it's, that everything is regulated and controlled. Uh, here's an example of the fifth year program, which has a lot more options basically, and then we have some small core options, and we've a large at the moment. It's a group project, and that is evolving. It's a large group project, so where you essentially work like a team in industry to manuf to design, make, manufacture, and test a novel engineering concept, mechanical engineering concept. So for example, people make web energy devices, uh, people make, um, you know, they, they, they work on, I think, wave energy devices, they work on various types of research machines to look at fatigue of materials, for example, um, other, other kinds of flow devices, etc. cetera, okay? Um, okay, so just some of the key highlights, I suppose, that my, that, that about here. So strong foundation in relevant mathematical and physical sciences. Okay, there's a, a big emphasis on design, analysis and materials, um, um, wide range of applied industrial modules. Um, we've, we're very keen on interdisciplinary skills. Um, it's really important for your career going forward. Um, we use a variety of teaching and assessment methods. Um, um, we have an industry placement program that is, very, is managed very, very carefully. We work very closely with industry. In fact, it's managed by our placement office, where it's a very professional outfit. Um, so we don't need to try and deal with it directly. They manage all of that for us and they'll manage your CVs and your interviews and they'll prepare you for your interviews and help you with your CVs as well. At the moment, mechanical engineering is, it's, it's either the most popular program. Essentially, we have a problem. The numbers are huge. The numbers of people wanting to do mechanical engineering are enormous. So we've gone from, you'll see some numbers in a moment, we've gone from about 30 students, let's say about six years ago, to now about 90 students in fourth year. So huge numbers, um, real re mechanical is very, very popular now. Personally, I attribute that to the way it's being managed by uh, my colleagues, Dr. Quinlan, Dr. Harrison, and all the whole team in mechanical engineering. And, and I think mechanical engineering is, is a very broad, very, very broad, um, um, degree, and we've got really good employment statistics. So just to uh, a couple of points here, um, eight month placement uh, from January to August, um, either in fourth year or third year, depending on whether you're doing the three year degree, sorry, the four year degree or the five year degree. Um, and in, in the last number of years, everyone was placed. So, you know, and what happens is, in my experience, any of the students that come back, I say to them, what are your plans next year? And they say, oh, well, the company I worked for on placement are offering me a job. And sometimes they don't want to go on, on placement there. They want to go somewhere else because maybe they feel like they've done that, they've been there, done that. They want to look at something else. Here's an example of various companies that take on our students. So you can see very strong biomedical theme as not surprising, but also lots of manufacturing, air composites, um, uh, various other companies, Board Gosh, Wood, Thermo King, Toyota, okay, ESB, Lots of examples. Here's some statistics. Um, I'm speeding up a little bit now, apologies. I just need, to, I'm just conscious of time. Here's some statistics showing the, that in graduate employment surveys, you hear some, some things about, you know, different universities uh, being excellent in terms of employment. But what you find is, you know, in 2017, for example, 75% of our graduates have gone into employment. That doesn't mean the other, the other, the 25% are unemployed. No, no, no. They go on, they've gone on to do masters. They've done further study or training in some shape or form. So, and 0% seeking employment. So, you know, basically they're, they're gone on. But these numbers have increased now. That was 36. We have about 90 in fourth year now, but they'll all get jobs too. It'd be the exact same thing. Thanks very much for your attention. Um,
if you've got any questions, please don't contact, hesitate to contact myself. My name is Sean, my email address is sean.lean at nuigalway.ie. If you look at my name on the, in the Zoom thing there, it's sean.lean, L-E-E-N, not E-A-N. Some people think, oh, it's S-E-A-N and L-E-A-N. No, 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 it's L-E-E-N at nuigalway.ie. Or you can contact my colleague, Dr. Harrison, who's the program director of the BE and ME programs. If you have questions, if, you, if it's possible now, you, if you, I'm not sure if you're allowed to unmute yourself, but if there's any really pressing questions that you want to ask, I'm certainly okay to take a question or two, but I suspect that Dr. Tong has been answering some questions. Is everything okay, Ming Ming, in terms of questions and stuff? Is there any issues you want to direct to me or you want a second opinion on? Oh, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Sean, for the great talk. And there is one thing that I would like to highlight, which is if uh, any of our students has interest in doing mechanical engineering in the undergrad uh, plus a uh, master program, can you please do your best to directly uh, select the GY405 code, the CAO code for mechanical engineering directly. If possible, can you please not try to select the non, uh, non denominated engineering degree? The reason is, for example, when you try to uh, switch from a non denominated pro, uh, program to specifically mechanical engineering, uh, when you move from the first to the second year, we may have. Uh, and uh, we, will, we may not have sufficient places for you because we have a limited spaces for mechanical engineering. If you have interest in mechanical engineering, how about you directly select the CA code GY405 for mechanical engineering. Okay, that's, that's brilliant. All, uh, that's thanks. Ming Ming, that's brilliant. I've got it up on the screen here. GY405 is what you should select. Just to yeah. follow up on Dr. Tang said, I would say the same thing. Um, I would think if you're not sure what you want to do, well, definitely don't put on mechanical engineering if you're not sure what you want to do, which of the engineering's. But if you are sure what you want to do or you're pretty sure what you want to do, I would say select it. The reality is, I mean, there is a risk. We always say there is a slight risk because of student, uh, student the, the large demand and the number of places. And for example, in our workshop, we only have places for a specific, a finite number of people. It's around about 90 is the maximum. If that goes very high, we might have to limit places. We always say we reserve judgment. So what I would say is you lose nothing by selecting mechanical engineering and going into mechanical engineering because you can always swap if you're not happy into one of the other programs. And if mechanical is the most popular program, by definition, any other program is going is ought to have extra places if, if you need to swap. So what we'd say is if you're not sure which program, choose undenominated. If you're pretty sure, choose mechanical. Um, that's I just follow up on Ming Ming said. I see Gavin there. Gavin, do you want to come in and, and say something? Sean, sure. indeed, yes. Um, could I ask you a question, please? Um, so say I'm a student who uh, is a little unsure and I decide to apply to GY401. Uh, so I'm in undenominated engineering in first year. Will there be a, a chance or maybe some help during first year to help me make my mind up then about the uh, degree I want in second year onwards. Thanks very much, Gavin. Absolutely. Um, we specific, specifically we run a we have a, a day long session. Um, it's probably halfway through the year. Maybe it's in January or something. Well, first two things. Two things happen. First of all, we have two modules. One of them I teach on called Fundamentals of Engineering, and the other one is called um, Engineering Design. In both of those modules, all so in my case, I teach for four weeks. So you learn about mechanical engineering for four weeks. Before I teach, John Breslin, Professor John Breslin from Electrical and Electronic, he teaches about electrical and electronic. After I teach, civil engineering teach. In second semester, biomedical engineering teach. So you get four weeks in that module of every form of engineering. So everybody has to do projects, teaching about engineering. So you learn about the different types of engineering. And then we also have engineering design. And engineering design, it's the exact same thing. All the disciplines have a certain number of weeks that they contribute to. And we have a day long session where the, the program directors or a, a nominee from the, program, from the discipline gives you a lecture specifically about mechanical and elect electrical and biomedical and civil and energy systems, for example, and, and all the ones. And then you go through a process where you make, you do an initial pre-selection early in the year, probably just before Christmas, 
to give to make see give us an idea of what the kind of likely breakdown is and then you got a chance to change your mind in semester two after we give this other session i don't know if that answers your question or not so the answer is yes there's nothing to be lost by doing i mean it's a common first year and that gives us gives us almost 100 percent flexibility and gives you almost 100 percent flexibility excellent thanks john and i i might, I might just mention that um, there were some questions there about whether you can rewatch recordings and the answer is yes, but it'll take us maybe a, a day or a, a, a few days or, or perhaps a week before we get those on the web, but, but we will. Thanks very much, Gavin, and thanks so much for helping out with all the, with the slight little issue we had there about the presentations. I know we're running over time, so I think probably, and there's a, 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 I guess a cascade of different talks um, coming up. So thanks very much. I'm going to leave now, I think. Um, and um, thanks very much, Ming Ming. Thanks very much, Gavin. Thanks very much, everyone, for listening. And I hope that's been helpful. And please don't hesitate to contact us if you've got more questions. <laughs>